Jan Ozer here. As we all know, your H.264 codec determines the quality of your H.264 video footage. So which H.264 codec is best? In Squeeze 8, Sorensen added the X.264 codec while keeping the main concept codec. This gives us a great platform to compare the two, which I'll do in this tutorial. Before getting started, let's look at a couple of new features in Squeeze 8. Come over to the Preferences dialog, and we see a tab for Squeeze Server. If you've got a copy of Squeeze Server running, you can send any encoding job from Squeeze 8 to Squeeze Server. This is a great way to offload your encoding chores to a much more scalable resource. The other new feature that I want to point out are additional adaptive bitrate presets in Squeeze 8. We saw some of this in Squeeze 7, but they really blossomed in Squeeze 8 with presets for the Adobe HTTP Dynamic Streaming Adaptive Bitrate uh, Technology, Apple HLS, that's uh, HTTP Live Streaming, of course, and then Microsoft Smooth Streaming. And let me point out that Sorensen not only creates the files and chunks them if necessary, but it also creates the manifest files. So all you have to do is encode and then upload to your server. And just to take a quick look at the presets, I like what they've done here. Basically, you insert a consistent keyframe interval here, a consistent fragment duration here. You can adjust your parameters for all files here, and then you can customize the encoding parameters for any particular file by clicking over here. So if you wanted this file to be, say, baseline profile, you would click it and choose baseline profile here. If you wanted to get a little bit more aggressive quality-wise here, you could make that the main profile. The other thing Sorensen did was make the audio parameters for all files the same, because that's what's recommended by both Apple and Adobe uh, when producing for their respective technologies. Once again, you've got a consistent keyframe interval for all files here and a consistent fragment duration. And these, of course, are configurable. And you've got customizable parameters for each stream. So if you want to change the H.264 encoding parameters, you can. And then you've got one audio parameter for all the files in the adaptive bitrate group. If you want to add more, you can add more. If you want to delete, you can delete. So it's a pretty competent preset, and it takes you from soup to nuts. It encodes the files, chunks them up, and creates the manifest files for you. Okay, now let's look at the X.264 codec itself. Okay, so let me click this. This is my preset. And I'm going to go down slowly, and you can see there are very many X.264 encoding parameters. And I didn't check them all, but the company officials tell me that these are all the parameters that are available in the X.264 codec. Probably too many for any novice to want to customize themselves. One of the nice things about Sorens' implementation is that you can modify a bunch of these encoding parameters by choosing a preset. So notice what's going to happen over here when I change from the slower preset to the ultra-fast preset you're seeing a bunch of these options change. Now, when the option's on auto, basically that means Squeeze itself is going to control how that's applied based upon the preset that you choose up here. And then if it's capitalized, that's the one that's, that's being used. If it's in small letters, that's the one that's not being used. So notice what happens when I go from ultra fast to slower. We see the options change. So if you want to control most of the options via the preset, you can do that. And if you want to control any directly, you just click the checkbox here, choose the desired variable, and then you're done. Uh, if you want to tune the preset for particular types of footage or for particular types of uh, post-encoding tests like PSNR or SSIM, you can do that as well. Okay, that's X.264. Another new feature in Squeeze 8 are greatly expanded main concept encoding parameters as well. So what you see here is instead of a preset, you control it via a number on the performance quality slider. And you can see a lot of the options here change based upon the value that I used. Again, if you want to specify any parameters, irrespective of the number chosen, you just click the checkbox, set the parameter, and then Squeeze 8 will implement the value that you selected directly. Pretty easy way to use the expanded uh, H.264 encoding parameters for main concept and, and the new ones for the X.264 codec. So with this as background, let's look at my tests. Okay, let's toggle over to Premiere. Here's the test parameters that I used. I encoded at 640 by 480 at 30 frames per second. Oops, it should be frames per second. At 280 kilobits per second video. Now this is very 
very aggressive. It's a bits per pixel value of about 0 .030. Um, compared to sites you know of on the web, CNN produces at about 0 0.1 or three times higher. So the bits per pixel value is about three times the 0 .03. And ESPN produces their higher motion footage at around 0 0.15, which is, which is five times higher. So if you're producing at these values around 0.1 or 0.15, you're probably not going to see any of the differences that, that you're going to look at in a moment between the X.264 and the main concept codec. On the other hand, if you're really, really pushing to get the best possible quality at the lowest possible data rate, then you will see some of the differences that, that you're going to see in a moment. Okay, here's the main concept encode on the left, 280 kilobits per second. Here's the X.264 encode on the right, 280 kilobits per second. Um, and these are particular frames that I picked out in the stream, and you can see that they're the same frame by verifying the time code over here on the bottom right. So in this frame, note the, uh, the bush here, very vague, very indistinct, here a lot better defined. Click and go over to the next one. This is the frame that is just at the end of the skateboard run, and it confines a lot of fine detail here with, uh, with the end of the high motion. We look over here in this region, we see a lot more retained detail here than we see here more detail here than here, and a lot more detail here than here. So and even, in, even the skater himself just looks a lot clearer and a lot better to find here than in the main concept clip. Okay, here in the PETA clip, we see, we see the beginning of blockiness here in the, uh, in the PETA cushion, and very indistinct hand, and here we see a much clearer hand and uh, much more detail in, in, the, uh, in the cushion she's using to make the PETA. One more. Over here, we see a lot more retained detail on the performer than we do over here on the left. The bottom line is that if you're looking for the ultimate in H.264 quality, you should at least try the X.264 codec. It's great that Squeeze 8 includes both codecs with access to all relevant configuration options for both. I'm Jan Ozer. Thanks for watching.